be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, you are the living light who transformed darkness into light. Through the blessings of this glorious Sunday, make us worthy to praise you with all those who saw the radiant light of your resurrection. We worship and thank you, your Father and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with the church and her children. Let us raise glory, honor, and praise to the living one who by his death gave life to his creation. By his resurrection he saved his church, gave joy to his flock, and brought us back to his Father, and enriched us with the gifts of his Spirit. To the good one be glory and honor on this blessed Sunday and all the days of our lives and forever. Only begotten Son, you were born of the Father before all ages, and by your creative will you separated light from darkness. On this, the first day of the week, you fashioned all creation to honor Adam, the image of your majesty. We praise and thank you and celebrate, proclaiming, Blessed are you, for you appeared in flesh on earth like us, and you lived among us. Blessed are you, for you were buried and counted among the dead. You shined your light in the sadness of the tomb. Blessed are you, for you rose to life, giving good hope to all. And you filled the holy angels with radiance, and they appeared at your tomb like flashes of lightning. Now, O Christ, we ask you with the fragrance of this incense to make us worthy to rejoice in the glory of your radiant resurrection. Breathe life into our departed and make them worthy to stand at your right hand in your eternal light that you have prepared for those who love you. With them we praise and thank you for your graces and glorify you, your Father, and your Holy Spirit forever.
accept the fragrance of our incense and our prayers, and may we become a sweet fragrance through our good works and actions. Hear our petitions and grant rest to our departed in your dwelling place of joy. O Lord, our God, to you be glory forever. Amen. Kaddishat with joy from the mountains. Sunday is a fee so great. Offer praise to the Lord God and with angels celebrate. Let's be God who exalted Sunday for above all days. Let the breeze A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish and her children forever. Brothers and sisters, when I came to you proclaiming the mystery of God, I did not come with sublimity of words or of wisdom, for I resolved to know nothing while I was with you, except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I came to you in weakness and fear and much trembling, and my message and my proclamation were not with persuasive words of wisdom, but with a demonstration of spirit and power so that your faith might rest not on human wisdom, but on the power of God. Yet we do speak a wisdom to those who are mature, but not a wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age who are passing away. Rather, we speak God's wisdom, mysterious, hidden, which God predetermined before the ages of our glory and which none of the rulers of this age knew. For if they had known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as is it written, as it is written, what eye has not seen and ear has not heard, and what has not entered the human heart, what God has prepared for those who love him, this God has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit scrutinizes everything, even the depths of God. Praise be to God always.
Master. Praise, glory, and honor, the Master of Trinity, God in the same sense, to the other son. Before the proclamation of the gospel of our Savior, announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. Peace be with you. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John, who proclaimed life to the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. Remain silent, listeners, for the Holy Gospel is about to be proclaimed to you. Listen in your glory and thanks to the word of the living God. The Lord Jesus says, Whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves me. And whoever loves me and shall, shall be beloved by my Father, and I shall love him and reveal myself to him. Judas, not the Iscariot, said to him, Rabbi, then what has happened that you shall reveal yourself to us and not to the world. Jesus answered and he said to him, whoever loves me shall keep my word and my father shall love him and we shall come to him and to make our dwelling with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. Yet the word that you hear is not mine, but that of the father who has sent me. I have told you all these things while I am still with you. The Advocate, the Holy Spirit that the Father shall send in my name, he will teach you everything, and he will remind you of all that I have told you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give it to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled or be afraid. This is the truth, peace be with you. Praise and blessings to Jesus Christ, our Lord and God, for giving us his words of life. Praise and Lord, how is it that you shall manifest yourself to us and not to the world? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. It's quite impressive when you read the Acts of the Apostles, that first generation. You see this tremendous enthusiasm for the gospel. Part of it's because it's new, but that's not the main reason. St. Paul, speaks in the epistle about, I bring you wisdom, but not wisdom of this age, not of this world. It's like our Lord says at the end of the gospel, I give you my peace, shlom I give you my peace, not the world's peace. And when we see this, it's not just the novelty in the Acts of the Apostles, but there is an understanding of what grace is doing within individual lives. And that's what's impressive. Because ultimately, when you look at it from that angle, we understand that the gospel is actually ultimately an adventure. It's leading us on a path, as our Lord says, the spirit of truth that will lead you into all truth, will teach you everything. We don't know what our lives will look like in 10 years. We don't even know if we'll be here in 10 years. But we do know, by the gospel and by our faith, is that our Lord is always leading us and teaching us and bringing us deeper into this light. It's not necessarily a very pleasant experience. 
Who wants to see all of the warts and the blemishes and the fact that with this person or that person I have a poisonous relationship? We don't like to see these things. But if we don't see them, we never have any possibility not only of healing them, we have no possibility of entering deeper into the light. Remember that when the Syriac tradition, by the year 900, was the largest geographic church. It stretched from the Mediterranean, the Levant, all the way out to Beijing in the Pacific Ocean, and then down through India, which is why to this day, the Christians in India, historically the Christians in India, are Syriac. And this vast expanse, but when it arrived in Beijing, what did the Chinese call this gospel? They called it the teaching of light. That's what it was referred to as being. So there's this whole adventure that we see in the Acts of the Apostles, which partly, as we said, the enthusiasm because it's new and the miracles that they're surrounded by, but a deeper understanding by the presence of the Spirit leading them further in. So this is why St. Jude asked the question in the gospel today. Rabbi, how is it going to be that you're going to show your, manifest yourself to us and not to everyone else, not to the world? After all, when we walked in the streets of Jerusalem, everybody sees you, everybody saw you this afternoon. How can it be possible that we will perceive you, we will see you, you will manifest yourself to us, but the others will not see you? Now this question that's being asked is during the Last Supper. And it's actually the fourth of the apostles. This is the dinner talk that St. John is giving us. Remember again at the Last Supper in the Gospel of St. John, he doesn't give us the recounting of the details of our Lord taking bread and saying, this is my body, taking wine and saying, this is my blood, because you know that already. And he's writing this Gospel decades after the first three have appeared. But what he does is he gives us the conversation of that night. What the other Gospels don't do, not in any great detail. But you have chapters, 13, 14, 15. It's all this dinner discussion that's going on around as our Lord teaches them, <clears throat> excuse me, at this Last Supper. So what happens as our Lord is teaching, he's talking about the spirit of truth, it's good that I leave you. Otherwise, the advocate, the paraclete, will not come to you. Of course, they have no idea what this means. But Simon Peter, being the first usually to kind of jump into a scene, Simon Peter is the first one to say, well, Lord, where are you going? Remember again at the supper, in the last supper, our Lord never speaks about his death. It's always about, I go to the Father, I go. And so that's why St. Peter just asked the question, Lord, where are you going? And this isn't the answer that our Lord winds up giving, that I go, in my Father's house there are many dwellings, many mansions in the old translation, many places and variety in the presence of the hidden Father. And I go to prepare a place for you. And I will come to you. And I will bring you with myself, so that where I am, you shall be. This is heaven. And that's why the distinct idea of heaven, of being present to God, is distinctly Christian. We forget about that. I mean, now we live in a world now where we kind of have residual Christianity, sentimental emotionalism. So that everybody who just by kicking the bucket pops off to happy land. But that's never been the Christian vision. The Christian vision is, is what happens at death. Our Lord says, I come and I will take you with me and you will be where I am, this presence within the hidden divinity, this presence with Christ. That's the Christian notion of what in English we call heaven. Of course, then that provokes Thomas to ask the question, well, Lord, we don't know where you're, how, to go, how you're going there. We don't know where you're going. So there's many mansions, there's a place I'm going with my father, okay, fine. But we don't know where that is. And that's when our Lord answers Thomas the famous lines, which you all know. I am the way, the truth, and the life. We don't know where you're going. The going, I am the going. I am the way. I am the truth which illuminates that path. 
And I am that life which is your goal. That's where the context of that famous phrase is. And then you have Philip popping into this conversation. Lord, show us the Father then. The hidden Father, the one who has many places, the dwellings, the mansions, these, this diversity among the hidden Father. So show us the Father. And it's when our Lord then answers Philip, have I been with you already for three years and you still don't understand? He who sees me, Philip, sees the Father. Our Lord doesn't say, I am the Father. He says, but in seeing me, you see the hidden Father. And that's why he then starts talking about, and I will reveal myself to you. That's why in this context of today's gospel, then Jude asked the question, well, Rabbi, how are you going to show yourself to us and not to others? And remember, it's that detail which I've brought up to you numerous times. Then after the resurrection, from the morning that he appeared to the women outside the tomb, our Lord only appears to those who are disposed to believe. They've either been disciples previously, or we of course have the exceptional miracle where our Lord backhands Saul off of his horse outside of Damascus. But the appearance of our Lord in his glory, his resurrection, his new life, the new creation, appears to those who are disposed to see him. And so what our Lord is doing is trying to lead Jude and the other apostles into this understanding that my manifestation to you depends upon whether you wish to see me or not. Remember on the day of the resurrection on Emmaus, when our Lord walked with these two men, he walked with them for hours and they didn't recognize him. Even Mary Magdalene, who was so close to our Lord, didn't recognize him. At that point, all it took though was her name, Mariam. And she immediately recognized him, Raboni, my master. So it depends, this manifestation depends upon the way that we are disposed to see. This is why we talk about faith as being a gift. And it's why then our Lord talks about he who has heard my word and who keeps it, who observes it, who obeys this word, loves me. That's the disposition which is necessary. And my Father will love him, and we will come to him, and we will dwell within him. We will come and make our presence in him. This is the manifestation. In theology, we call it the divine indwelling. This transformation of the inward experience of the spirit within us, the divine spirit which is moving us toward the hidden one. This is why in the beginning of the sermon we talked about this adventure that is the gospel is that it has to make us see all those blemishes and toxicity in relationships and the poisonous way that I deal with this person or that person. Because if I don't see them, I can't be healed. Because it's an experience. As remember, as we considered last week, the Trinity is not a doctrine that just simply comes from the heavens. The Trinity is the verbal human expression of what the experience of the church is, of the hidden Father, of the hidden Word, and of the spirit that transforms us as he moves us toward the hidden one. And so as the first four centuries of the church's experience go, you would have individuals who would come along and say, well, no, the spirit is just a power. It's just a force. It's God's action. It's not really God. And it's because of those statements when the church just simply stated back by saying this is ridiculous. We know the experience the transformation which makes us free by this presence of the Spirit given to us in baptism and in chrismation. There's no way that you can say that that which makes us divine, that which makes us the children of God, is just a force. It is truly God. And so in the experiment then of what we articulate as being that made up word of Trinity, it's explaining what is the experience and the life that we live. And this movement, and it's the understanding that God first dwells within his saints long before his saints ever dwell in him, in the hidden Father, heaven. Long before this thing ever takes place. Heaven is not something that is going to happen to us because we croak. 
Death just takes place. It's what happens in our lives. We all die. And we die the way we live. Heaven is what begins before the healing within the souls, that presence within us. And as we said, that God dwells within the saints long before the saints ever dwell in God. And with that experience is what our Lord is talking about. When you have heard my word and you listen and you keep that word, you obey it, it manifests that you love me. We talked about it last week when we considered the fact, what kind of, reciprocate, what kind of relationship do you have when you communicate with somebody once every seven years, once every six years? It's not a relationship, certainly not intimate. Love always desires reciprocated presence of communication, which is why we pray, which is why we are present to the divine mysteries, because it's in the divine mysteries that God is present to us, not just simply as creator, as the power that created the universe, but personally, that he reveals himself to us. And it's in that communication and that transformation that the Greeks have called theosis, this divinization, this presence of the spirit within us. But in our Syriac tradition, we use the term mingling or clothing, which is just straight from the scripture. St. Paul talks about putting on the Lord Christ, putting on Christ. And the mingling you have in the anaphora of St. John Chrysostom, that your body be mingled with our bodies and your blood with our souls. This idea of mingling is what the Syriacs use as a term for this divinization the freeing us from our merely human ways of thinking, or as St. Paul says in the epistle, the wisdom which is merely of this world. And so this is the answer that our Lord winds up giving to Jude. How is it that some of us will see you and the others will still just kind of go on obliviously? So I mentioned before the Mass, when I was getting ready at the rectory, you watch one of the young people leaving Colby, quite happily bouncing along with their little beach bag and their shorts and the t-shirt and going out. It's clearly a very enjoyable day. And as we were saying, as we move further away from the gospel, this young person certainly doesn't even think about Jesus at this moment. Think about the beach, people you're gonna hang out with. We lose the understanding of the presence of what God did by appearing in time and in history for us in this transformation. And that's why our Lord says in this gospel today, he who does not love me does not keep my words. You'll know if someone's not attached to the gospel, he says, because they don't follow the gospel. They don't live the gospel. He who does not love me does not keep my words, does not observe them. And therefore, the commandment is not the purpose. It's the directive which our Lord gives of life and the response is this love that disposes us to hear. And in hearing, our Lord says he manifests his divinity to us, that interior dwelling of the hidden Father in him, which brings us to that clarification of depth within the soul, to see things differently. Remember in the catechism when we were seven and they were pushing us through and you had to memorize the gifts of the Holy Spirit and all of this? We memorized them, we spit them out, Probably if my life depended on it, I couldn't name all seven of them at this point, right? And yet, what are these gifts? They elucidate the experience of what the Spirit does by transforming the individual when we are attentive to that transformation. And three of those gifts are wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Knowledge is the inner penetration of what these words mean, the gospel. Wisdom gives us that vision to see things from the aspect of eternity, to see things with the eyes of God. And that means to see everything, the way I shop, the way I pay my bills, how I deal with the people around me. The spirit of wisdom makes me see this world differently than the worldly do. And that's part of these gifts that are given to us and the presence of the Spirit that transforms us. It introduces us into the depth of the gospel to taste and to see, as the scriptures talk about, to taste and to see how good the Lord is, how sweet the Lord is. And so that's what the answer to St. Jude is today. 
And you'll notice that when our Lord finishes this whole explanation of how he will manifest, because you're disposed to see me, you will see me. You're not disposed to see me, you'll be clueless. And you'll just bumble along and you'll be off at the beach. If you are disposed, my Father will love you and we will come to you and we will dwell within you. And then our Lord says immediately, Shlom Dil, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. But this is the eternal stability of the tranquility of the order of the reworking within the individual by the presence of divinity within us. It results from the presence of that healing grace and the divine indwelling. It's a beautiful term, which is why it's repeated during the Mass. Shlom kul chun, shlom kul chun. Those of you who are old enough to remember when it was all in Syriac, that's what you got. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. This is the words of our Lord that I give you something that transcends the world. If you hear me, and in hearing me you love, and in loving you listen, and in listening you keep and observe. All reciprocal friendship and love. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives, do I give it to you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Telvot ma debhe dalohu, 
Lord and God, you accepted the offerings of our ancestors. Now accept these offerings that your children have brought to you. Out of their love for you and for your holy name, shower your spiritual blessings upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. Amen. As we remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation for us, we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, St. Joseph, her spouse, St. Mary, St. Jude, and St. Charbel. Remember, O God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers, and our <coughs> brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom this sacrifice is offered for the intentions of the members of this parish. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering. Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O God, the Father, lover of all people, though we are unworthy, make us worthy of salvation. Purified of deceit and hypocrisy, and united in the bond of love and peace, 
Through our Lord, God, and Savior, Jesus Christ, may we give one another the greeting of peace with the holy kiss. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, who is good, life-giving, and consubstantial with you now and forever. Amen. Peace to you, holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O minister of God. Peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. Let each one of us give a greeting of peace to his neighbor with love and faith, which is pleasing to the Lord. Merciful Lord, you dwell on high and look down upon the earth. Through the grace of your only Son, send your blessings upon those who bow before your holy altar. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O God the Father, in your love for all people, you sent your Son into the world to bring the lost sheep back to you. Do not turn your holy face away from us as we celebrate this spiritual and bloodless sacrifice. Relying on your mercy and through the grace of your only Son, we ask that this mystery instituted for our salvation not be for our condemnation. Rather, may it blot out all our sins, forgive our faults, and be an expression of our thanks for your goodness. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The love of God the Father and the grace of the only begotten Son and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your Spirit. Let us lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship him with humility. It is right and just. Truly it is right and just to glorify you, bless you, praise you, adore you, and give you thanks. O maker of all things, visible and invisible, the highest heavens and all its powers praise you. The sun, the moon, and all the stars the earth, the seas, and all that is in them, the heavenly Jerusalem, and the assembly of the firstborn, who are enrolled in heaven. The angels, archangels, and all the heavenly hosts sing, praising your majestic glory with triumphant hymns, and with never-ending voices, and with sweet acclamations. They cry out, and they proclaim. King of ages and giver of all holiness. Holy is your only Son, our Lord and God Jesus Christ, and holy is your life-giving Spirit, who delves into all things, even into the depths of God. You are holy and almighty, the Creator and the Good One. 
You formed us from the dust of the earth and gave us the joys of paradise. When we had transgressed your commandment and fell, you did not abandon us, but like a good and merciful Father, you instructed us. Through the law you called out to us, through the prophets you guided us, and at the appointed time you sent your Son, our Lord and God, Jesus Christ, into the world to renew your image. He came down and by the Holy Spirit became flesh of the holy and ever-Virgin Mary and dwelt among us, accomplishing all things for our salvation. Kyrie eleison, wabiyamo hadoktum khashrodi lema bidhaye. En sabe lachma bidao koni shantan, o bara chukade. Waksuya bil talmitao karomara, sabah kule mehne kulkhu. Denny <laughs> Kanno alko so dam sich wo men hamro wo men mayo. Parecho kadesh. Ya bel talmitao karo maro. Sabesh tao mehne kulho. Hono denitao. Demohon dilem di antiki khdato. Do this in memory of me, for whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim my death and profess my resurrection until I come again. We remember your death, O Lord. We profess your resurrection. We await your second coming. We implore your mercy and compassion. We ask for the forgiveness of sins. May your mercy rest upon us. O Lord, we remember your death, your resurrection, your ascension into heaven, your sitting at the right hand of God the Father, and your glory is second coming when you shall judge the world with justice and reward all people according to their deeds. Now we ask you, do not repay us according to our sins and transgressions, but in your compassion and love for all people, Cleanse us of all of our sins. We, your people and your inheritance, implore you and through you and with you, implore your Father, saying, Have mercy on us, Almighty Father. Have mercy on us. O Lord, as we, your sinful children, receive your graces, we thank you for them and because of them. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. We glorify you, we profess our faith in you, and we ask you, have compassion on us, O God, have mercy on us and hear us. How awesome is this moment, O my beloved, for the living Holy Spirit descends and rests upon this offering for our sanctification. Let us stand with reverence as we pray. Anin morio, anin morio, anin morio, ni temor rojo chayu kadisho. O nachen alainu alu korbo no ho no. Kiri 
Christ is sent, he may make this bread a life-giving body, a saving body, a heavenly body, a body that redeems our souls and bodies. The body of our Lord, God and Savior, Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of sins and eternal life for those who receive it. Make the mixture in this chalice, the blood of the new covenant, a life-giving blood, a saving blood, a heavenly blood, a blood that redeems our souls and bodies. A blood, the blood of our Lord, God and Savior, Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of sins and the eternal life for those who receive it. Amen. May these holy mysteries be for the sanctification of the souls and bodies of those who share in them, that they may excel in all good deeds. May they be for the strengthening of your holy church, which you have founded on the rock of faith, so that the gates of hell shall not prevail against her, delivering her from all heresies and doubts until the end of time and forever. We offer you, O Lord, this sacrifice for your holy church throughout the world and for the holy places that you have glorified by the presence of your divine Son, Christ our Lord, especially for Zion, Jerusalem, mother of all the churches. Remember our pure bishops who spread the word of truth, especially our blessed fathers, Francis, the Pope of Rome, Bashar Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, Gregory John, our bishop, and all the orders of the church and those who serve her. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord of goodness, your holy church, and have mercy on all her faithful. In your compassion, heal all the wounded and injured among your flock. Punish injustice and strengthen all our brothers and sisters. Bestow the grace of conversion on all. With your indestructible power, strengthen the bishops of the true faith, that they may be upright and courageous in their apostolic office. May they show fidelity as they stand ever before your eternal justice. Unto your honor and glory, may they prove themselves upright, dauntless, and persevering in the task confided to them. To lead all the faithful, into the fullness of your redeeming light and glory, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord have mercy. Remember, O Lord, our parents and all our brothers and sisters, those here praying with us and those who are not here, and those who have asked us to remember them in our prayers. Answer the petitions that will lead to their salvation. Remember those who have presented the offerings upon your holy altar, those for whom they have been offered, those who have desired to make an offer but were unable, and those who we have remembered, and those whom we have not. Reward them with the joy of your salvation and accept their offering upon your heavenly altar. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, our civil leaders and clothe them in your fear, that they may stand for justice and establish peace. Remember also captives and prisoners, the sick, the suffering, the afflicted, the needy, and those who labor in all walks of life. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, all those who have pleased you from the beginning the holy and glorious ever-Virgin Mary, the patriarchs, prophets, and apostles, St. John the Forerunner, St. Stephen the Archdeacon and First Martyr, St. James the Brother of our Lord, St. Joseph, St. Jude, St. Marin, and all the saints. In your grace, count us among them in the church of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, the fathers and teachers who spread the word of truth in your holy church and preached your Son, Jesus Christ, to all nations. Through their prayers, grant peace to your church and confirm their teaching in our souls. 
We pray to you, O Lord, Lord, have mercy. Remember, O God, of all spiritual and earthly beings, the faithful departed who have died in the true faith. Grant them rest and do not take their faults into account. Through our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, who is without sin, we hope to find mercy and forgiveness for our sins and for theirs. Grant rest, O God, to the departed, and forgive the sins we have committed, with or without full knowledge. Grant us pardon, O God, and forgive us and the departed, so that your blessed name may be glorified in us and in all things. With the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. As it was, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father of mercies and God of all consolation, you have sanctified this offering, these offerings and the gifts presented to you on, and have perfected them by the grace of your only Son and by the descent of your Holy Spirit. Sanctify us now, so that with pure hearts and enlightened souls we may call upon you, O Holy Father, God of heaven, praying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Yes, O Lord our God, lead us not into temptation that we do not have the strength to endure. But when we are tempted, deliver us through Jesus Christ our Lord. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads before the God of mercy before his forgiving altar, and before the body and blood of our Savior, who gives life to those who partake of it, and receive the blessing from the Lord. O Lord, we bow our heads before you, awaiting your abundant mercy. Send your blessings upon us and sanctify us, so that we may become worthy to share in your holy mysteries. With the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and his mercy and love for all people. You are blessed and glorified with him and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit, let each one of us look to God with reverence and humility and ask him for mercy and compassion. Holy gifts for the holy, with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One, One Holy, holy Father, Father 
one Holy Son, one Holy Spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord, for he is one in heaven and on earth. To him be glory forever. Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by your holy body, and our souls purified by your forgiving blood. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins and for new life. O Lord our God, to you be glory forever.
Again and again we thank you, O Lord, and raise glory to you for giving us your body to eat and your living blood to drink, O lover of all people. Have mercy on us. We thank you, O God the Father, for your great and indescribable love for all people. Since you have made us worthy to share in your heavenly banquet and in your Holy Spirit, do not forsake us for having received your holy mysteries, but keep us in the radiance of all holiness and righteousness. With all the saints, may we obtain a share in the heavenly reward through the grace of your only Son and his love for all people. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, who is good, life-giving, and consubstantial with you, now and forever. Peace be with you. And with your Spirit. Jesus, our Lord, protect, bless us, protect us, and guide us on the path of life. Favorably remember the departed of those who have shared in this Eucharist that was offered upon this divine altar. Grant protection to the living, and bless them with hope. With the prayers of the ever-Virgin Mary and of all the saints, now and forever. So just two things to note for this week. 
You have it in the bulletin, but the second week of the Apostles' Fast, preparing for the Feast of Saints Peter and Paul and the Twelve Apostles. Uh, Friday, because Easter was so late, Friday this year is the Feast of the Sacred Heart. So on that specific day, there's no fasting, no abstinence on Friday. So this week, of the last week of the fast. And the second announcement is, I encourage you to pick up the, the beautiful edition of the Maronite Voice at both of the doors. You have a nice little biography of all the things that Patriarch Sphere accomplished during his years as our Patriarch. It's quite beautifully done. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever.